I've been living with the Surface Duo, Microsoft's answer to dual screen folding phones. And so far, it's been pretty rough. This is what I like to call the five stages of dealing with Duo. Stage one, wow, it really is beautiful. So when you open up the Surface Duo out of the box for the first time, the feel of it wins you over. It's glass, it's metal, it feels like a little moleskin book, the hinge is really smooth, everything feels ready for something kind of special to be going on. And when I held it in my hands, it felt lighter and thinner than I expected, and kind of like a little magic book. I thought to myself, wow, if I could open this up and I could work on it, and it could feel really comfortable, that's interesting. Plus. It sometimes feels like a 3DS when you hold it like this. When you fold it back, it feels like a phone. It's a little bit like a tablet when you hold it like this. So I kind of like all those dimensions. But that's before you turn it on. Stage two. Wow, this software is not great. Now, I'm not just talking about the idea of what the apps can do, but the general performance on the Surface Duo so far, admittedly pre-release, has not been good. I've been finding that everything has been feeling really janky. So you'd hope that at least that the foam would feel really nice and smooth and everything would flip around and orient the way you'd expect on a phone or a tablet. And even though the Surface Duo has dual gyro and accelerometers and proximity sensors on this that are meant to know how it's turned and how it's flipped, I found that in practice, that was really rough going. So if I turn this around on its side, it usually took a while to get the orientation to flip. And sometimes it wouldn't flip at all. And when it came to touch responsiveness, I also found that things sometimes didn't quite work. And even Android apps wouldn't necessarily show the buttons in the right place. And if I clicked on them, they didn't necessarily respond. And the camera app, the shutter button didn't always respond, which is definitely not good. The other strange thing about the Duo is that you'd expect when it flips over in tent mode that you'd have screens on the front and back. That isn't the case. Only one screen activates and the other one turns off, but you can then double tap to activate, which also sometimes didn't quite happen. And if you did, was it the app on the back or the app on the front that ends up appearing? Well, it depends on how you're holding it. If you flip it, it might bring up the other app or not. And I found that I didn't really know which app I was going to be invoking. It drove me crazy. What I'm trying to say is that the duo started to drive me crazy. I just feel like it's a real pain to set up apps and the keyboard in particular. This is a selfie video of me while walking. There's no optical image stabilization. Stage three. How are you even supposed to use this thing? So I thought I understood that this would be kind of like a magic book, but for reading on it, I found that some apps take advantage of dual screen, others don't. If you don't, you're scrolling two different apps at the same time, which is a little awkward. And if you're using the Kindle app, which does work with dual screen now, if you drag to fill both screens, uh, yeah, it kind of feels like reading a book. But the other modes, like a 3DS mode, where you're meant to maybe type or work on things like a sidekick and see things on the top screen, didn't always work as expected. The keyboards shifting around drove me crazy. And there are only a certain handful of apps that work in dual screen and really understand each other. Those are Microsoft's core apps. You have to be into Microsoft's ecosystem to do that. Google's core apps, which is what our office uses, are the ones that don't work well in dual screen yet and aren't made to handshake with each other because Google hasn't really built that support into Android yet. I'm sure that will happen but right now, they kind of feel like they're off on their own islands. Also, this is a big device. It's wide. So if you're taking a call, it feels bigger. And am I going to unfold this and take the call? If you take photos, there's only one camera and it's not good. So if you use it, you're gonna have to flip over to flip the phone to take photos like this or to take a selfie and if you're using it for video conferencing, Zoom and stuff like that, and who isn't, sure, it's really cool to be able to open up 
uh, Zoom and have another app at the same time. But orienting those two halves to work together is super frustrating. If I flip it like this, like a laptop, I don't find that the other app always stays open and sometimes the Zoom flips my face around weirdly. By the way, let's talk about videos and things like surfing the web. If you open this up in a tablet mode so it gets this mint of putting that feel of one giant screen in your pocket, you kind of have to live with this more as two separate screens, except for Microsoft's Solitaire app. So if you were dreaming of that, you're gonna have to wait. And that means you're gonna launch a game in one pane or the other, kind of like any other Android device. And I did try connecting Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, which is gonna be available on Android phones officially soon, and I streamed to this, I connected a controller, Sure, it works, but that's all well. In that case, it's gonna be toddling it while you use it. It's been getting better. So now, holding phone that's out there. Samsung has a number of them. And Microsoft is trying to solve the productivity question on these. And to me, it software and tutorials going in a year